This is the Singer 6215C sewing machine. In this video, I'll be showing you how to thread this machine, and after, I'll show you some troubleshooting tips if you're experiencing skipped stitches while zigzagging. Let's start by winding a bobbin. This is the handy dandy threading diagram from the manual that we'll be following. Place a spool of thread on the spool pin and hold it in place with the spool cap. To stop the needle from moving when you're using the foot pedal, push the indent on the hand wheel. Lead the thread from the spool and snap it into both sides of the first thread guide. Wind the thread clockwise around the front of the bobbin winder tension disc. Guide the thread through the hole in the bobbin from the inside toward the outside. Place the bobbin on the spindle and push it to the right. Hold the end of the thread and press the foot pedal to run the machine until the bobbin is wound to your liking. This machine will automatically stop when your bobbin is full. Cut the thread and push the bobbin and spindle back to the left and remove it from the spindle. Trim the excess thread from the hole in the bobbin. Make sure to return the hand wheel back to the sewing position when you're done. Now we're ready to do the upper threading. Turn the hand wheel towards you to move the take-up lever to the highest position. Raise the presser foot. Place a spool of thread on the spool pin and slide the spool cap in place. Lead the thread first through the plastic thread guide, then through the metal thread guide. Bring the thread down and toward the left between the tension discs while holding the thread taut with your other hand. Bring the thread back up, pulling against the spring. Lead the thread up and behind the metal thread guide. Guide the thread back into the take-up lever by pushing the thread back into the gap, then pulling the thread back forward once it's caught by the lever. Lead the thread down the needle area and pull it through the spring-shaped guide, then lead it to the next two guides. If you're using a heavyweight thread, don't thread the lowest guide. Thread the needle from front to back, leaving at least a 4-inch tail. Inserting the bobbin. Make sure that the presser foot is in the raised position and slide open the bobbin cover. Place the bobbin into position with the thread leading out counterclockwise. Guide the thread into the notch of the front into the slot, then out the notch at the left. Pull the thread across the bobbin, then close the bobbin cover. Hold the upper thread taut in one hand and turn the hand wheel towards you. A little loop of bobbin thread will pop up. Pull the bobbin thread out and lead both threads toward the back of the machine. Now you're ready to sew. Here are some of the basic features of this machine. To use the machine in free arm mode, lift the extension table from the front edge, slide it off to the left. When you're done, slide it back into place. Here's the length dial. In addition to adjusting stitch length, you can also set a stretch stitch or four step buttonhole. Use this lever here to adjust the stitch width. Use this lever to adjust the stitch pattern. If you have your stitch length set to a numeric value, you'll achieve the white labeled stitch, but if you have your stitch length set to the red dot, stretch stitch, you'll achieve the red labeled pattern. This dial here allows you to change the position of the needle from center to either right or left. 
To run the machine in reverse, hold the reverse arrow button on the length adjustment dial while using the foot pedal. According to the manual, the Singer 6215C sewing machine is from 1984, so it's currently one of the newest sewing machines in my vintage collection. I won this item in an auction for one Canadian dollar. I couldn't resist it when no one else bid on it. When I brought it home, the straight stitch function worked fine, but as soon as I switched it to the zigzag, I experienced skip stitches. The wider I made the stitch, the more prominent the issue appeared. The biggest cause of skip stitches is a bent needle. Even if it doesn't look bent to the naked eye, switch it up to rule it out. Next, we cleaned out the dust and dirt from the bobbin case using a little brush tool like this one. Never, ever, ever use canned air when cleaning a sewing machine. But unfortunately, this did not solve my skip stitches issue either. The issue seemed to be with the timing. I'll post a separate video on my channel that shows how we fix the timing issues on this machine. After that, the machine was as good as new. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up to help support the Craftcore channel. Please subscribe for more vintage sewing machine tutorials, among other crafty content. Thank you for watching. This is Craftcore signing off. See you next time.